Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to give everyone an update on the HE80, uh, Lafayette HE80 receiver project. Um, so I've been working on um, improving the single sideband and CW audio. Uh, it was not to my desire, it was rather raspy and gritty sounding and um, I didn't like it. So um, in addition to changing out all of the uh, old capacitors, which uh, I went through on my previous video, um, uh, put in a three um, wire cord here, uh, the hot line um, is switched through the switch and then to the fuse and then to the transformer. Uh, replaced this uh, 0.01 safety cap in here. Um, I think I went through in the other video, uh, restuffed the uh, filter capacitor here. Um, this capacitor here is a 20 microfarad. I upped it to 47 microfarad at 250 volts to provide a little more filtering. So. Uh, the schematic for this radio, I got it off radiomanual.info, just did a Google search and uh, found it there. Um, so here are the filter capacitors that I upgraded, um, 47 microfarad here. This one was a, was a 20, or actually, yeah, it was a 20. Uh, so upgraded that to 47, a little more filtering in that line. Um, for the product detector, which I'll go through in a second, which required a lot of work to make it sound better, um, the radio had uh, a 6BY6 installed uh, when I got it instead of the 6BE6. The 6BE6 apparently is a noisy tube, and the 6BY6 is a better tube, quieter tube. Um, so... That's what's in the radio. Um, so these are the schematics you can print offline. Um, I just went ahead and I labeled what each tube uh, did and um, traced out the, um, the voltage lines to each of the section. Um, this capacitor here, a 0.05, was replaced with a 0.047. I added another 0.047 there. This is the AGC line. And to get a little better AGC action, I added another um, 0.047. It's up here. Uh, just added another one in parallel. Um, so let's get to the heart of the matter here. So uh, this website here, nubosystems.org, um, a lot of great information here. Um, this uh, person uh, has some great information on the HE80 and the HA225 modifications. He, he did a lot of work trying to get the audio and the SSB CW to sound better on this radio. So um, on his website, uh, there's a, a whole lot of changes going on up in here. Some of them I implemented, some of them I did not. Like for instance, he wanted uh, to disconnect this ANL here. I did not do that. But there were other changes um, that were uh, suggested, which I, uh, I did. I actually, I'm gonna take this out here because I didn't do that. And uh, this was, um, <clears throat> a change also I uh, I changed that to um, let's see let me go back through my notes uh, put in a 20 there I put in a put in a 20 this is the BFO line and uh, it goes up here to the product detector I uh, he recommended swapping pins uh, one and seven um, to improve the product detector audio, and I did that. Um, I'm just going to run through here all these changes. So C37 
um, uh, was changed to a 68 picofarad capacitor. That's up here. Um, it's a 50 cap picofarad now. Changed that to um, a 68. Um, I was looking at other receivers uh, and their circuits um, and their product detector uh, designs. Um, on one website, there was a raspy audio issue on an NC300. Um, so this capacitor here, um, I changed that to uh, a 68. <clears throat> uh, I've already mentioned that up here on the product detector tube, it's recommended to swap pins one and seven. Uh, just because of the design of the tube. Other changes here uh, are 40 to 40, uh, 470 ohms. Um, I made a mistake. I was uh, I put in a 470K and uh, had to take that out because it was a mistake. Um, uh, so that's 470. Changed R31 to uh, 220 ohms. Uh, and the BFO line, um, to the product detector, I added a 20 microfarad mica cap and a uh, 110K ohm resistor. Um, and uh, I did not add, uh, I just crossed it out up here. This, I had this 22K resistor in and uh, the audio was squealing. I took it out. Okay. Um, and I added a 47K resistor um, up right in here, right in here. I added a 47K in, in that line. This product detector, it, according to uh, you know, the Nubo Systems engineer and my observations, this product detector by initial design is just getting overloaded with IF and BFO signal and causing the distortion. Um, I did not disconnect the ANL per that um, diagram. Um, as I said, I added another 0.047 capacitor in parallel to the C37 to improve the AGC action. Okay. So if you decide to go ahead and do these modifications, do them very, very slowly. The area is very tight and difficult to work in. Take pictures, make diagrams, and um, you know, do this uh, very carefully. It's very difficult. Um, complete at your own risk with power disconnected. Um, you know, you do this all on your own at, at your own risk. You can see uh, the modifications at, uh, at this website here. But I'm going to give you a closer look up in here at just how tight it is to work in here. Um, the product detector and the BFO tubes are just really, really tight. Um, what I did here, uh, the BFO line, I put in a shielded line of the shield grounded on one end because um, I was getting some hum. And I thought that the BFO line was picking up AC um, and and causing the hum. Turned out it was um, a bad product detector tube, which uh, it actually tested good in my um, tester, but um, changing it out to another tube um, uh, got rid of the hum. So I'm going to pause the video and uh, we'll turn the radio on and listen to it. Okay, um, I have the radio on 40 meters, single sideband. I have it hooked up to my uh, 40 meter uh, dipole. I'm using the standard Lafayette speaker, which actually sounds uh, pretty good on this radio. Uh, so I'm just going to tune around here and give you a flavor for the single sideband. This radio uh, it takes a while to warm up and it drifts like crazy for at least a half hour. So uh, that's an inherent issue with uh, this radio, and I believe the HE30 and the HA225. You got to re really let these uh, receivers warm up for at least a half hour so that they're stable.
Yeah, Roger. And it'd be nice to put right in the corner of my deck here in the backyard. There's a lot of guys around here. Well, a few guys around here that do the chainsaw. Uh, carving and they make bears and eagles and all that kind uh, the of The single stuff. side band is a lot more easier to listen to now, a lot more tolerable. But it's all on the database and that's on my desktop. That's uh, the only I mean, it's not going to sound as good as a, a Drake R4B or, right, or uh, RC uh, or a better radio. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's acceptable. Let's see if I can, there was a parts on the air person. Uh, just brought the Baltimore. Let's see. Um, the Q multiplier Roger, Roger, yeah, is not doing anything. Nice. I mean, I turn it up and uh, QSL. Hey, thank you for activating. It, it uh, lowers the uh, RF gain quite down, quite a bit. But this is supposed to go into, I believe, oscillation. Um, like it used to do on my Hammerlin HQ100A, but this uh, the Q multiplier on this radio does not do anything. Um, I still have to turn down the RF gain a little bit. I usually leave it at about the uh, four o'clock position, or back it off a little bit. On very strong signals, uh, the RF gain still has to be back down a lot. The BFO, uh, once you set it, you don't have to re really reset it. Sounds good. Let's see if I can get another station here. There's some uh, other station. Uh, she designs a lot of um things and uh wants some some type of cottage on the ocean. The stability in the head of, the of the this radio, like I said, is uh, pretty uh Unstable, uh, drifts quite a bit for the first half hour, 45 minutes. But after that, it warms up pretty good and uh, it's stable. I'm going to see if I can get some CW here because the CW is actually nice now. CW is now pleasant to listen to. Um, on this radio, at least, it was very raspy and gritty prior to making the modifications. And uh, I actually uh, find it pleasurable to listen to now, uh, easy on the ears. The raspy, gritty sound uh, was uh, very annoying. Band spread, uh, very, very touchy. Um, so what you do is um, you set the main tuning here to uh, this edge of the band. And then you set uh, the band spread down accordingly. Um, it's not quite calibrated well yet. I have to do an alignment. Uh, uh, it's uh, not very precise, but uh, that's what you do. You set the uh, the main tuning dial uh, right there to either the B1 or B2, or whatever part of the band you want to look at, and then you use the uh, the band spread right there to B2. Uh, or B1, uh, but it's it's pretty uh, coarse. I mean, if I was to add a digital uh, display to this radio, uh, would be you know a lot better uh, in terms of precision. So let's go to AM and let's go to broadcast. Let's see what I can get up here uh, at. Uh, Nine megahertz. Let's see what I can get up there. I don't know if there's anything going to be there today, right now. We do have some uh, religious broadcasting up here. Let's see. I do have to trim the antenna. 
get a peek on the antenna. And the band, sp band spread is helpful. Let's see. Let me find something else. Make sure to check out the Overcomer podcast. Um, what band am I on? Okay, 14.5. Tune in to World's Last Chance Radio to learn how you can spiritually prepare for what lies ahead. WLC Radio, preparing a people. a little bit of distortion so I, I've been having to back it off a little bit no more than uh, five o'clock uh, beyond that full full gain it's a little distorted so we have international stations um, music uh, talk news that's really becoming for a woman isn't it um, these days, religious broadcasting uh, is, is uh, quite dominant on the show. Right now. So, let me go to uh, standard broadcast. That has to be backed off too. Well, actually, I was in the six. Standard broadcast. Uh, See what we got here. Dug in on this. So it does not seem like we're getting any kind of state visit or to taunt anytime soon. Or even high. Fair. He's being retried at. So don't hesitate to back off the RF gain to make it sound better and, and turn up the AF gain. That's just the way it is with these uh, type of vintage receivers. AGC action uh, isn't isn't good on this radio, but it, it, it works um, with some manual manipulation. Right, so I'm gonna tune off this so I don't get a hit on copyright. So I actually like this radio a lot. Uh, this was being sold by Lafayette, as I said, when I was growing up as a kid. Uh, the Lafayette store in my hometown had this radio, and it was a, a great radio. And they sold a lot of these. They came in ham band only, shortwave, uh, and uh, ham band uh, combo like this one, the HE80, the HE30, HA225. There was the HA500. Lafayette made uh, a lot of these through uh, Kenwood Trio. They were made in Japan. And they were a good uh, beginner radio. Uh, they were, this one went for $129 uh, back in 1964, 65. So I'm quite happy with it. Uh, the only other thing that's still uh, a slight uh, issue is um, I'm hearing some crackling and some uh, static crashing off and on very very infrequently but it, it's it's uh, somewhat present uh, and that's uh, the silver mica disease um, in these IF cans so we have three IF cans we have a, a T1, T2, T3 um, I'm not looking forward to taking these apart and, re and repairing them with a fixed uh, mica capacitor it's a little bit of an involved process uh, there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube about fixing silver mica disease in IF cans. Um, it's not an acute issue right now on this radio, uh, so I'm just going to leave them alone for now. So um, that's my video for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the project uh, really came out nice. I'm happy with it. I got I got some noise there on that coming from that light. So all the best. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Seven three. Bye bye.